Hi, I'm Han Brown, the host of the Boomer Living Broadcast. Thank you so much for joining, and I look forward to sharing my ideas as well as hearing your opinions on today's topic. Also, for those that joined us, please comment and let us know where you're chiming in and what industry that you're in. And remember, uh, please ask questions, leave comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for those who sent questions ahead of time. I'll make sure that I'll answer them first. Um, I respect your time, so uh, let's get started. Today's topic is how baby boomer entrepreneurs can create a digital brand to attract their ideal customer. While the event is titled for baby boomers, the takeaways from the event are relevant to all business owners. Entrepreneurship is nothing new to baby boomers. They were the ones who pioneered it, and they continue to be at the forefront of innovation and creativity. But in today's digital world, their experience and knowledge are more important than ever. With so much competition out there, it's important to have a strong online presence, and that starts with branding. Without a strong brand, you quickly can get lost in the shuffle. Unfortunately, baby boomers have the expertise and creativity to build a strong brand online. With some effort, they can tap into the power of social media and connect to customers around the world. So if you're a baby boomer looking to start or grow your business, don't underestimate the importance of branding. It could be the key to your success. So in today's event, I will go through some key components of branding and how you can reach out to your ideal customer. First, I'll go through the topic, what is a digital brand? Second, what is an ideal customer profile known as ICP or buyer's avatar? Third, why prospecting is the lifeblood of any business and learn how to prospect. Fourth, what is funnel marketing and how does it work? Fifth, how to generate leads via social media, inbound and outbound. Six, how does market segmentation work and what are its benefits? Seven, what is SaaS marketing and how does that work? Eight, what is marketing automation and how does that work? Well, by the end of the webinar, you have a clear action plan for creating a digital brand that will help you find and keep your ideal customers. So what is a digital brand and why is it important in the digital age? Well, as more and more companies are moving towards a digital age, they are faced with the task of creating or rebranding their company for the digital world. But what is a digital brand? Well, a digital brand is a sum of all interactions that a company has with its customers or potential customers online. This includes, but not limited to, the company's website, social media presence, and any other customer touch points. In the digital age, your brand is more than just a logo. It's a sum total of all of your interactions with your customers, prospects, and partners. Simply put, a strong digital brand will make it easier for potential customers to find you online and engage with you. A strong digital brand will help build trust with potential customers and set you apart from the competitors. Your digital brand also extends to how you interact with people online. If you're responsive and engaged on social media, people are going to see you as a company that's approachable and easy to work with. However, if you ignore complaints or never respond to customer inquiries, people are going to see you as unprofessional and unresponsive. So in today's digital age, it's more important than ever for business owners to invest in their digital brand. Well, here are some reasons why. Reason one, the internet is the new yellow pages. In the past, when someone needed to find a product or service, they would open up a yellow page and look for businesses that offer what they're looking for. But nowadays, when people need to find something, they go online and search for it. As such, it is important for businesses to have a strong online presence so that they can be found by potential customers. Reason number two, first impressions matter and they're made online. These days, potential customers are often forming their first impressions of companies long before they ever step foot into the store or speak to a salesperson. Well, thanks to the internet, Potential customers can do their own research on the company, and uh, they often do. In fact, according to one study, 80% of people say that the web has influenced their purchasing decisions. That means if your digital brand is weak or non-existent, you could be missing out on sales simply because you didn't make a good impression. Reason number three, social media has changed the way we communicate. 
Social media has changed how we communicate, not just with our friends and family, but with brands as well. In fact, according to one study, 42% of consumers say that they have reached out to a company in social media for customer support. That number jumps to 67% for millennials. And what's more, other studies have shown that social media can have a direct impact on sales, meaning that if you're not on social media or if you're not using it correctly, you could be missing out on revenues. So I'm going to go through five tips for developing a strong digital brand. Your digital brand is the way that you present yourself online and it should be a reflection of your best self. Well, here are five tips in developing a strong digital brand. First, be authentic. In order to build trust with your audience, it's important that you be authentic. People can spot in authenticity from a mile away. So don't try to be someone that you're not. Be genuine, transparent, and be honest in your interactions with others. And they're more likely to trust you and your brand. Second, be consistent. Consistency is the key when it comes to building a strong digital brand. Make sure that the way you present yourself online is consistent with the way you present yourself in person. Use the same photo across all of your social media platforms and make sure that your bio is up to date on each site. If people can't find the same information about you across the internet, they may lose some trust in you as a credible source. I need to do this myself and update my own profile on a regular basis, which some, is something easy to overlook. Third, be active. In order to stay top of mind, it's important to be active online. Post regularly on social media, write blogs, articles, and send out newsletters, whatever that you do to keep your name in front of people. The more active you are and the more value that you add, it's more likely that people will remember you when they need what you offer. Fourth, be helpful. One of the best ways to build trust with your audience is to be helpful. If you see someone struggling with something that you know how to do, offer your help, even if there's nothing in it for you. When people see that you're willing to go out of your way to help them, they're more likely to want to do business with you down the line. Five, be human. In a world where everything is digital, it's important to remember that behind every computer screen is a real human being, just like yourself. When interacting with others online, Try to be as personal and human as possible. It can go a long ways towards building relationships and understanding with each other. Six, pay attention to online reviews. Online reviews can make or break your business. Just one bad review can turn away potential customers or clients, but lots of good reviews can attract new businesses like there's no tomorrow. So pay attention to what people are saying about your business online, and be sure to respond promptly and professionally to any negative reviews. Don't be afraid to ask satisfied customers to leave positive reviews, but never offer any sort of incentive in exchange for a review, because I think this violates most review platforms' terms of service. So in conclusion, a strong digital brand is very important for any company that wants to be successful in the digital age. Your digital brand reflects who you are as a company, as a person, and it determines how people perceive you when they interact with you online. By investing in your digital brand, you can increase client base, attract top talent, and build customer loyalty. So let's talk about an ideal customer profile, also known as ICP or buyer's avatar. Your ideal customer is the one who will fall in love with you, with your service and product. They will use it every day and they will tell all their friends about it. They will be your biggest fan and they will evangelize for you. Your ideal customer is one who needs your products or service. They may not even know that they need it yet, but they will soon realize that your product or service is exactly what they've been searching for. Your ideal customer is the one who believes in you and in your vision. They see the world the way that you do and they want to help you build the future that you're striving for. They're passionate about what you're doing and they want to be a part of it. Your ideal customer is the one who trusts you. They know that you have their best interests at heart and they know that you're not going to let them down. So they believe in you and they are willing to take a leap of faith with you. Your ideal customer is the one who is like you. You share similar values and you have a similar worldview. You understand each other and you connect on a deep level. You are friends as well as customers. Your ideal customer is the one who challenges you. 
They push you to be better and they hold you accountable when you falter. They believe in your potential and they want to see you reach it. They are tough but fair and they expect greatness from you because they know that you're capable of it. Your ideal customer is the one who supports you. They are there for you when things are tough and they celebrate with you when things are going well. They want to see you succeed and they are willing to help however they can. So let's do a deep dive on what is an ideal customer profile. Well, an ideal customer profile includes information such as demographics, psychographics, behaviors, and needs. This information can be used to create targeted marketing campaigns that are more likely to reach and convert your ideal customers. Well, why is an ideal customer uh, profile important? Well, an ideal customer profile is important because it helps you focus on your marketing efforts and the customers who are most likely to buy from you. By targeting your marketing and your ICP, you can improve your chances of marketing a sale and increase your ROI. Also, an ICP can help you create more personalized marketing messages that would resonate with your target audience. So third, how do I create an ideal customer profile? In business, you are only as good as your customer base. Well, this is especially true for small businesses and startups who are trying to establish themselves in a competitive marketplace. It's important to spend time developing an ideal customer profile, ICP, so that you can focus your marketing efforts on attracting the right customers. Without a laser focus ICP, your marketing campaigns could be scattered and ineffective. You could end up wasting a lot of time and money chasing customers who will never convert. So how do you go about creating an ICP? Well, first, define your target market. Get specific about who your target market is. You can't create an ideal customer profile if you don't know who you're targeting in the first place. An easy way to do this is by breaking down your target market into smaller segments based on factors like age, gender, location, interest, and even income level. The more specific you can be about who your target market is, the better. This will make it easier to create targeted content that would resonate with them. Second, know your customer's pain points. Once you have a good handle on who your target market is, it's time to start thinking about their pain points or the problems that they need help solving. What are the biggest concerns or challenges they face in their everyday lives? If you can address those concerns through your product and service, then you'll be well on your way to becoming their go-to solution. Third, determine where they hang out online. Now that you know who your target market is and what their pain points are, so it's time to start thinking about where they hang out online. What social media platforms do they use? What kinds of websites do they visit? What forums or groups do they belong to? Knowing where they hang out online will help you figure out the best way to reach them with your marketing message. Well, for example, if your target market consists of millennials who are interested in sustainability or social responsibility, then chances are they spend a lot of time on Instagram and Facebook following brands with similar values. Now, conversely, if your target market consists of small business owners who are looking for tips on how to save money or run their businesses more efficiently, then LinkedIn would be a better platform for reaching out to them. Once you know where your ideal customers spend their time online, you can start developing content that resonates with them and motivates them to take action. Fourth, what information should be included in an ideal customer profile? One of the first things that you should include in your ideal customer profile is demographic information. This includes things like age, gender, location, marital status, income level, employment type, are they full-time or part-time, unemployed, education level, interests, hobbies, their family situation. Do they have children? Are they empty nesters? Well, this information can help you determine where to focus your marketing efforts. Second, psychographic information. Psychographic information includes people's attitudes, values, and lifestyle choices. This type of information can help you determine what motivates your target market and what kinds of messaging will resonate with them. Another important piece of information to include in your ideal customer profile is behavior data. This includes things like how often they purchase your type of product or service and how much they are willing to spend, what channels they prefer to use when making a purchase online or in the store, and how they like to receive promotions and communications, whether it's email, text message, direct mail, and so forth. 
Including all this information in your ideal customer profile can help you better understand how best to reach out to them and what type of messaging will resonate with them. Once you have all of this information compiled, you want to give your ICP a name and include a photo if possible. This will help bring your ICP to life and make it easier for your team to reference when making decisions about marketing and sales strategies. Creating an ICP is very important. It's a first step in understanding your target audience and building a successful marketing strategy. For those in the audience who are from the senior care industry, let's do an example. So what is the ICP for senior care providers? Well, there's no one size fits all answer to this question as the ideal customer profile for a business in senior care will vary depending on the specific services that the business offers. With that said, there are certain characteristics that are common among seniors who need assistance with their daily living activities. Well, generally speaking, the ideal customer profile for a business that is in senior care is someone who is elderly, has limited income, and is in need of assistance with their day-to-day -day activities, they may also require additional medical care and supervision. This customer is likely to be living on their own or with a caregiver, and they may not have the many social connections that they need. They also likely to be interested in receiving assistance with activities such as bathing, dressing, and grooming, as well as help with meal preparation and taking medication. They will likely prefer home-based care solution over facility-type community. Ideally, the business in senior care would cater to seniors who live in the local community. This way, the business can provide face-to-face -face assistance and build close relationships with their customers. The senior who use the company services should be able to rely on the business continuous of care and feel comfortable coming to the business for help with any issue or concern that they may have. So there you go. We did a deep dive of what is an ideal customer profile. So let's talk about why prospecting is a lifeblood of any business and how you can learn to prospect. Prospecting is the process of identifying and cultivating potential customers for your product or services. It's the lifeblood of any business because without customers, you don't have a business. So why is prospecting important? Well, here's two main reasons why. First, it allows you to reach new audiences and expand your customer base. Second, it helps you keep your business top of mind with your current customers so they continue to do business with you and refer others to you. Businesses attract new clients and increase revenues through prospecting. Even if you have a wonderful product or service, nobody will buy it if they don't know about it or don't know if they need it. So by proactively contacting potential clients, you increase your likelihood that they'll buy from you Prospecting is important for keeping current clients happy and engaged. It reminds them that you're still there and that you're the best option for what they need. And when done right, prospecting can be the difference between a client staying loyal or taking their business elsewhere. So how to prospect successfully? Well, the first thing is you need to do is define your target market. Who are your ideal customers or clients? What do they look like? Where do they live? What do they do for a living? And once you have a good idea of who your target market is, you can start reaching out to them. This is a topic that we discussed previously. So there's many ways to reach your um, target market. You can use print ads, cold calling, online ads, or social media marketing. Stick to a method that works for you and for your business. Prospecting requires consistency. If you want results, keep meeting new people. Put up a system that generate leads automatically so that you don't have to spend all your time doing it yourself. Spend a defined amount of time each day prospecting, whether it's one hour or 30 minutes. Automating lead generating frees up time for prospecting. Quality trumps quantity. 100 quality leads are better than 10,000 low quality ones. So here are some tips for learning to prospect. First, do your research. Before even picking up the phone or walking into a networking event, it's important to do your research and understand who your target audience is and what their needs are. This way, when you start reaching out to people, you can tailor your pitch specifically to them instead of just using generic talking points that might not resonate. Look at their website, read their blog posts, follow them on social media, get an understanding of who they are as a person and as a business before trying to sell them anything. Second, network. 
Well, get involved in industry events and become active in relevant online communities related to your industry. Not only will this help increase your visibility among potential customers, but it also gives you an opportunity to learn more about people um, in your target market, what they're looking for, so that you can adjust your offerings accordingly. Third, create valuable content. Produce blog posts, white papers, ebooks, anything that prospective customers might find helpful and would be willing to exchange their contact information for. And once you have this valuable content uh, promoted across social media channels and through email marketing campaigns and drive traffic back to your website where people can download it in exchange for their contact information, in other words, their name, email address, and so forth. These are called lead magnets, and they're an effective way to generate leads without being too salesy about it up front. Fourth, ask and ask. Well, don't be afraid to actually pick up the phone and send an email asking for a meeting um, so that you can further explain how your product or service could help them solve a problem. If someone says no, and they will, move on quickly. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. The more no's you get, the closer you'll be in hearing a yes. So any business owner knows that acquiring new customer is very important for your success. The key to successful prospecting is consistency. It's important to use multiple channels and touch points to reach your target market. And it's also important to follow up regularly. By taking the time to prospect consistently, you greatly increase your chances of acquiring new customers and growing your business. So let's talk about funnel marketing. What is it and how does it work? Before we go into deep dive about funnel marketing, we need to understand inbound marketing. Inbound marketing is all about creating content that draws people to your product or service. It's about creating relationships and providing value. Inbound marketing includes things like SEO, search engine optimization, content marketing, and social media marketing. The goal of inbound marketing is to attract strangers and turn them into customers and advocates. And it starts with a single piece of content. That's right, one piece of content can be a start of a long and beautiful relationship between a business and its customers. Inbound marketing does this by creating and distributing relevant and valuable content with the goal of attracting attention and driving engagement. Once someone is engaged with your content, you can then focus on converting them into a lead, which you can do by providing them with an offer that they can't refuse, an ebook or something like that. So from there, it's all about nurturing your leads until they're ready to become customers. The final step is to turn your customers into promoters of your business by delivering an amazing product or service experience and encouraging them to spread the word. Now that we've covered the basics of inbound marketing, let's talk about funnel marketing. It's all about taking prospects through the stage of inbound marketing funnel until they convert into customers or advocates. In a nutshell, funnel marketing is a strategy that businesses use to turn leads into customers. It's a process of nurturing prospects and guiding them through the buyer's journey until they're ready to make a purchase. And there are three main stages of the funnel. The first stage, the awareness stage. Um, this is when you're getting your name out there and raising awareness for your product and service. This is where you generate leads by attracting people to your website or social media channels. To do this, you need to create high quality content that showcases your brand in a positive light. You also need to make sure that your content is optimized so that people can find it easily when they search for keywords related to your business. So the next stage is consideration stage. Once you've captured someone's attention, the next step is to get them interested in what you have to offer. This is where you start building relationships with potential customers and showing them why they need your product or service in their lives. And to do this, you need to provide even more valuable content that addresses their specific needs and pain points. So basically, you are solving their pain points. You can also offer free trials, coupons, and other incentives to encourage people to give your product or service a try. The next stage is decision stage. It's the final stage of the funnel. And this is when potential customers are ready to make a purchase. It's where you close the deal and turn leads into paying customers. And to do this, you need to provide a seamless buying experience and ensure that customer expectations are met or exceeded. You should also continue offering post-purchase support 
so that customers remain satisfied with your purchase long after they made it. So funnel marketing is a strategy used by businesses to generate leads and convert those leads into customers. The goal of funnel marketing is to attract the right people to your product and service and then guide them through each stage of the buyer's journey until they finally become customers. To do this effectively, you need to create content that speaks for each stage of the customer journey from awareness to purchase. And with a well-executed funnel marketing strategy, you can maximize your conversion rate and boost the bottom line. So let's talk about how to generate leads via social media, inbound and outbound. With over 3 billion people using social media every month, so it's no surprise that businesses are using this platform to generate leads. In fact, social media is a powerful tool that can be used both inbound and outbound lead generation. In order to generate leads through social media, you need to have a strong presence in the platform. This means creating high quality content that is relevant to your target audience and sharing it on a regular basis. When you provide value to your audience, they will begin to see you as a trusted source of information and will be more likely to do business with you when the time comes. Remember to respond to comments and messages in a timely manner and engaging with other users on a regular basis. And in doing so, you will develop relationships, potential leads, and will be on top of their mind when they are ready to make a purchase. So one, let's talk about inbound lead generation and what that is. It's a process of attracting strangers and turning them into leads through the use of content marketing, search engine optimization, and other inbound marketing strategies. The first step to generating leads via social media is to identify your target audience. Once you have a good understanding of your target audience, you can create social media posts that are designed to attract their attention and encourage them to learn more about your product or service. You can also use social media ads and um, to target specific groups of people who are more likely to be interested in what you have to offer. You can also attract visitors to your website or blog through compelling content. Once you have attractive visitors to your site, you need to convert them into leads by collecting their contact information. And you then can nurture these leads by sending them targeted emails and all the relevant information until they are ready to buy your product or service. Second, outbound lead generation, what that is. It's a process of actively reaching out to potential customers. Unlike inbound lead generation, which relies on attracting strangers to your website, outbound lead generation requires you to go out and find potential customers. This can be done through a variety of methods such as cold calling, email marketing, and online advertisement. This also can be done through direct messages, comments, and even private messages. The key with outbound methods is to be personal and try to build relationships with a potential customer before asking them to buy anything. Third, social media lead generation. Social media lead generation is a process of using social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn to generate leads for your business. The first step in the social media lead generation is to create a profile uh, for your business on each platform. Once you have created the profile, you need to start posting engaging content that will attract potential customers to your page. You can also use paid advertising on social media platforms to reach a wider audience. Once you have generated the leads, you can then nurture them by sending them targeted messages and, and offers until they're ready to buy your product or service. So let's talk about LinkedIn lead generation. The first step in LinkedIn lead generation is to create a company page for your business. Once you have created a company page, you need to start posting engaging content that will attract potential customers to your page. You can also use LinkedIn paid advertising options to reach a wider audience. And once you have generated the leads, you then can nurture them by sending them targeted messages and offers until they're ready to buy products or service from you. Facebook lead generation. Well, Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world with over 2 billion active users per month. The first step in Facebook lead generation is to create a Facebook page for your business. And once you've created the page, start posting engagement content that will attract your potential customers. You notice that the common denominator across all of this is to creating engaging content and add value and value. This content should be designed to capture the attention of your target audience and encourage them to interact with your brand. There's a number of different ways to create engaging content, but some of the most effective methods include creating infographics, videos, blog posts, and images. Remember to use hashtags. 
Hashtags can help you connect with people who are interested in the same topics as you are. Hashtags can also be used to track down potential customers who might be interested in what you have to offer. Social media is a powerful tool that can be used for both inbound and outbound lead generation. If you want to generate leads via social media, make sure that you have a strong presence on the platform that you are sharing high quality content on a regular basis. You should also be active in social media and responsive to comments and messages so that you can develop relationships with potential leads. Finally, consider using social media ads to reach out to potential leads who are not already following you. By following these tips, you can generate more leads for your business via social media. So let's talk about how does market segmentation work and what are its benefits? Well, there's an old saying that goes, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, this couldn't be more true when it comes to marketing. Although the methods and channels may change, the principles of marketing remain the same. And one of the most important principles is market segmentation. Simply put, market segmentation is a process of dividing a market into distinct groups of consumers with similar needs and characteristics. Businesses use market segmentation to target specific groups of consumers with tailored products or services. And why is this important? Well, consider this. Not all consumers are the same. They have different needs, wants, and motivation. What works for one group might not work for another. And that's why it's important to segment your market. It allows you to create targeted messages that resonate with each group. There are a number of different ways that businesses can segment their market. They might look at factors like age, gender, income, location, and even interests and lifestyle choices. And by understanding these different segments, you can tailor your marketing efforts to each group in a way that is likely more likely to resonate with them. So what are the benefits of market segmentation? Well, perhaps the most obvious is that it helps businesses save money by targeting your advertising more effectively. It helps marketers better understand the needs and wants of their target audience, and it helps marketers create more targeted and effective marketing campaigns. So we briefly discussed this topic earlier, but it bears repeating because it is the central to your marketing efforts. What are the different types of market segmentation? There's four main types, um, geographic, demographic, psychographic, and behavior. So let's talk about geographic market segmentation. Geographic market segmentation is a process of dividing the market into smaller groups based on geographical factors such as region, country, city, or neighborhood. So this would be good if you have a brick and mortar store. So let's talk about what is demographic market segmentation. Well, demographic market segmentation is a process of dividing market into smaller groups based on their demographic factors, such as age, gender, income, education, or family size. So let's talk about psychographic market segmentation. Um, that is when you consider factors such as lifestyle, personality, values, or interests. So the next market segmentation is behavior. Behavior market segmentation is a process of dividing market into smaller groups based on consumers' behavior, such as purchasing habits, brand loyalty, or likelihood to recommend a product or service to others. There's numerous ways in which marketing can be used effectively when segmenting a target market, and some include using surveys, questionnaires, and focus groups, uh, discussions in order to determine what motivates people within each group so that advertisement can be tailored around this information. Also, conducting research to identify any trends that may exist between various demographics that may influence the purchasing decisions. So, by understanding the different types of market segmentation and how they work, you can create a more effective marketing strategy for your business. Each type of market segmentation has its own benefits, which is important to understand which one will work best for your specific product or service. Once you have a clear idea of your target market, you can start tailoring your marketing messages to appeal to them specifically. Let's talk about SaaS marketing and how does that work. Well, SaaS is software as a service. It's a type of software that helps businesses automate their sales and marketing tasks. It includes tools for email marketing, customer relationship management, and content management. How does SaaS marketing work? Well, SaaS marketing focuses on building relationships with customers and leads through education and content marketing. 
The goal of SaaS marketing is to create awareness about your company and about your product or service. Once you have created awareness, you can then start to build relationships with the potential customers and leads. These relationships are important because they help you to build trust with your potential customers. Once you have built trust, you can then start to educate them on your product or service and how you're able to solve their problems. By using SaaS marketing tools, you can automate your sales and marketing tasks, including email campaign, social media outreach, and lead generation. This allows you to focus on the core products and services free from the hassle of manually managing these tasks. Well, here are some benefits. Increased productivity, freed up time to focus on other tasks, reduced costs uh, associated with manual labor, ability to scale quickly and efficiently, improved customer relationship, and also better target consumers. So why is SaaS marketing important? Well, as the world moves increasingly online, more and more businesses are moving to a subscription-based model. This means that they are offering their product or service as an ongoing subscription instead of a one-time purchase. The reason for this shift is that subscription-based models offer businesses a recurring revenue stream. This is important because it allows businesses to predict their future income and investing accordingly. There are four main pillars of effective SaaS marketing, product, pricing, distribution, and customer success. First, let's talk about product. In order to succeed in SaaS marketing, you need to have a great product. Your product needs to be able to solve problems that your target market has, and it needs to be better than the competition. Your pricing strategy is one of the most important aspects of your SaaS marketing strategy. You need to find a balance between making your product affordable and making enough money to sustain your business. Distribution. In order to reach your target market, you need to have a solid distribution strategy. This includes things like search engine optimization, content marketing, and social media marketing. Once you have acquired customers, you need to focus on keeping them happy and ensuring that they continue to use your product. This can be done through things like customer support, user experience design, and data-driven decision-making. As a business owner, you wear a lot of hats, from sales to marketing to accounting. It can be hard to keep up with everything. SaaS solutions can automate sales and marketing tasks, freeing up your time to focus on other areas of your business. Also, SaaS solutions offer an easy way to improve productivity and get an edge on the competition. And by using data to inform your decisions and streamlining your processes, you can work smarter. So let's talk about marketing automation and how does that work? Well, at its core, marketing automation is a set of tools and processes that enables businesses to automate and streamline their marketing tasks. This can include anything from email marketing to social media outreach to targeted ads. The goal of marketing automation is to make marketing tasks easier and more efficient so that you can focus on other areas of your business. So how does marketing automation work? Well, marketing automation software typically includes a wide range of features, all designed to help you automate different aspects of your marketing efforts. Some of the features include email marketing. Automate your email marketing campaign so that you can stay in touch with your leads and customers without having to manually send each email yourself. You can also segment your email list so that you can send targeted messages to specific groups of people. Second, social media outreach. Marketing automation allows you to schedule social media posts in advance and track who's interacting with your content so that you can better understand what's working and what's not. Lead management. Marketing automation helps keep track of your leads through a sales cycle so that you know when they're ready to buy and that you can follow up accordingly. Analytics. Marketing automation can provide you detailed reports on your marketing campaigns so that you can fine tune your marketing efforts and get better results over time. Well, there are many, many benefits of marketing automation. Increase efficiency. Imagine a world where you could get notification every time one of your customers made a purchase. You could see what they bought, how much they spent, and whether they were satisfied with their purchase. You also would have the opportunity to reach out to them and offer them a coupon or a discount on their next purchase. This might sound like a dream, but it's actually a reality for businesses that use marketing automation. By automating repetitive tasks, businesses can free up their team's time to focus on more strategic tasks. And also, marketing automation provides businesses with valuable insights into their customers' behavior. 
So as a result, businesses that use marketing automation are able to increase their efficiency and improve their customer relationship. Next, improve return of investment. Well, if you've ever been frustrated by a low return on your investment from your marketing campaigns, well, you're not alone. Many businesses struggle to track the results of their campaigns and adjust their strategies accordingly. With marketing automation, this allows businesses to get the most out of their marketing campaign budget and ensures that they are targeting their audience in the most effective way possible. So as a result, businesses that use marketing automation see an improved ROI from their marketing campaigns. Now, increase customer engagement. Any business owner knows that a customer engagement is very important for long-term success. However, manually managing customer communications can be time-consuming and expensive. Marketing automation provides a solution by automating customer communication and delivering personalized message at scale. This not only saves businesses time and money, but it also helps create deeper relationship with customers and improve customer retention rates. In today's competitive marketplace, businesses need to find every advantage that they can to engage with their customers, and marketing automation is a tool that can help. So when it comes to marketing automation, successful brands know that it's all about understanding their target audience. They take the time to research who their ideal customer is and what they're looking for. This allows them to create messaging that resonates and speaks to their needs. Also, these brands have a well-defined goals for marketing automation efforts. This helps them track their progress and ensure that they are meeting their objective. So as a result, they're able to fine-tune their strategy and continue to see success. Your brand is the image that your business projects to the world. It's how you communicate who you are, what you do, and what you stand for. And in the digital age, your brand is more important than ever. With the power of social media, a well-crafted digital brand can help you attract new customers, build loyalty among existing ones, and even drive sales. So what goes into creating a strong digital brand? Well, first and foremost, it's important to have a clear understanding of who your ideal customer is. Once you know who you're talking to, you can start crafting messages that resonate with them. It's also critical to have a solid funnel marketing strategy in place. This will ensure that you're generating the right kind of leads and conversion rates are high. Finally, don't forget about the power of social media. Both inbound and outbound strategies can be used to attract new customers and build awareness for your brand. When done correctly, digital branding can be a powerful tool for growing your business. So if you're not already investing in this area, now is a great time to start. Well, in closing, I hope that you gain some useful information that will help you build your brand and scale your business. If you need help with prospecting, scaling your business, or getting more opportunities to serve, please reach out. My team and I have developed an amazing system called In One App that automates all of these processes it's an all-in-one sales and marketing automation system that will save you a ton of time and money. So if you're interested in learning more, please leave a comment below or contact me. We'd be happy to provide you with access to this incredible tool. And thank you so much for attending today's event.